here, it's Melody Brooke again. Today I'm talking about self-esteem and um, when we have a problem with it, what it is that we're doing that may be contributing to that and what are some things that we can do to um, improve our self-esteem. So um, let's, I'm gonna start, I guess, by defining what self-esteem is. Self-esteem is um, not, doesn't necessarily have anything to do with confidence or, um, hi Dawn. Um, it, Self-esteem is basically how you honestly feel about yourself. And that may not be clear through um, your actions because sometimes our self-esteem will make us appear as if we're a braggart or that we're overly confident or that we are um, critical of others or um, maybe even um, putting people down with, hi Alan. Um, so so self-esteem is really about the, the, at the core emotional depth of how you feel about your self-value as a human being. Whether you feel that you have value and um, uh, uh, ability and that you matter in the world. And when we are lacking self-esteem, sometimes that comes from um, a childhood of being shamed a lot because very, very punitive parents can set us up to not feel good about ourselves. Even when on the one hand, they may be you know, building us up, telling us how great we are. On the other hand, um, they're also at the same time very punitive for things when we make mistakes, which that's part of being a human being, right? Is making mistakes. We all do it. it, it it's, it's how we learn, after all. If we, if we didn't make mistakes, um, we wouldn't um, be able to do anything. There, we would be handicapped because we would be actually making mistakes by not doing anything. So, so really, when we're talking about self-esteem, we're talking about how you can um, make your internal emotional well-being improve. Um, so Ellen says, true, the hardest thing in the industry is to be seen but not to brag because we are often judged for what we say. Right, and that is, um, uh, hi Dimitri. Um, so yes, um, when, we're, when we feel good about ourselves, we don't go necessarily bragging to the whole world about how awesome we are. Um, that's something that people do when they don't feel good about their self, themselves and when they're working at improving their self-esteem, sometimes they will brag in order to, um, hi Colt, to help themselves feel more uplifted, so that, to try to compensate for that lack of self-esteem. So what, what we have to work on then is um, recognizing, um, hi Greg, recognizing that our self-esteem is often dependent on the way we were treated as a child and how we now treat ourselves as adults. Because what happens is that we will treat ourselves the same way that we were treated as a child. That's how we learn to, to um, respond to ourselves. Um, hi Angie. So, uh, by the way, thanks so much for, for being here today. And if you have never tuned in before, please um, make a note, say hi, and tell me where you're from. Um, okay, so what? how do you know if you have uh, poor self-esteem? Well, the easiest way to know that when you have poor self-esteem is to recognize, number one, how do you talk to yourself? What are the messages that you give to yourself, particularly under stress? or particularly when you are doing something that you feel ha um, has been a mistake or has become a problem for you in some way. Um, oh wow, you're from Bangkok, that's awesome. So hello Bangkok, thanks for tuning in. That's so exciting to have somebody clear across the world. So self-esteem is, is um, again measured by how you, how you talk to yourself. What is that unconscious thing that's happening inside um, and, and we can become conscious of what is, is unconscious. So one of the, the things that, that, um, that I have learned about what basically what therapy is, therapy is a process of making the unconscious conscious. So when we, we can take those unconscious thoughts, those unconscious feelings, those unconscious awarenesses and make them conscious so that we can begin to change them. 
so for myself, I know um, I, I grew up in a very shaming household where when you made a mistake, you were, or if you had a feeling that somebody didn't like, or if you said something somebody didn't like, then you were treated as if you were um, not fully human. <laughs> you basically were um, rejected, um, verbally um, shamed, and maybe even physically um, punished for being who you are. And so when that happens, we, we internalize that and we believe that we deserve that. Hi, Carrie. And when we believe that we deserve that, what we end up doing is treating ourselves that way. Because if we were raised in a punitive home, then when we make a mistake, we don't do something exactly perfectly, or when we do something that doesn't live up to our own standards, we will start to tell ourselves really, really negative things about ourselves. And so then we start treating ourselves the way we were treated as a child. So I'm curious um, if you guys know what I'm talking about, if that makes sense to you. Um, if so, please, you know, I would love for it to, to hear some of your experiences about how that happens inside of you. So what, what I teach my clients to do um, is to start slowing down and becoming mindful of what their unconscious thoughts are when they're flooded. And, and of course, going back to talking about flooded, that's when um, this old brain reacts. Uh, this is a model of your brain for those of you who haven't watched before. Um, this is your brain stem, that fight, flight, freeze, automatic reflex lives back here in that lizard brain, that reptilian brain. And then the midbrain is the emotional centers of the brain. And then the new brain is um, the part of our brain that developed last. It's where our logical thought is and our um, problem solving skills and our language skills are there. And when we, um, hi Ken, um, when we get triggered, that basically means that this old reactive brain has, has, has experienced something as a threat. And sometimes that threat can come from us. Sometimes that threat can come from a sense that we have failed ourselves or that we have not lived up to our own expectations. And so then we feel uh, a rush of negative emotions. We feel, um, uh, less than, we feel shame, we feel um, angry at ourselves, we feel uh, just really upset and, and um, hurt. So um, let me read what Alan's saying here. I'm sure you would agree that our uh, repression in childhood can go both ways as we grow. Um, i trying to see the rest of it there. For some reason it's not letting me see the rest of what you said, darn it. Um, so yeah, um, I'm not sure what you're about to say, Alan, but yes, um, it can definitely go both ways. And um, so in, in childhood, hi Monica, um, when, we, when we have learned to um, punish ourselves and we start flooding ourselves with these negative thoughts, these, um, the, the first thing that we're aware of is the emotions. Normally, we'll get flooded with the emotion first Okay, so what does it say? I am, in my experience, when told you can never achieve that, my reply was always watch me. Oh yeah, that's, this is true. That is, um, that is a really healthy response to being told that. Not everybody responds that way. It kind of depends on other factors in your world. Um, but yes, I'm kind of like stubborn that way too, or defiant in that way too. <laughs> so I understand exactly what you mean. But, but it's interesting. Um, it's, even though you may have been told that um, and that defiant part of you will kick in and say, yes, I will, that doesn't necessarily mean that when it happens, you'll feel good about it because you're also um, measuring yourself by a standard that isn't necessarily realistic. And it, because we do by habit, like I said, treat ourselves the way we were treated, right? So, so the trick is to to slow down and become mindful of the ways in which we are um, treating ourselves and, and, and we'll get flooded with those emotions first. And so the first thing we're aware of is the feelings and we're not necessarily aware of the thoughts that go along with that. So when we become mindful, and, hey there, Michael. Um, when we become mindful of those feelings, we can we can slow down and just sort of um, go inside in a mindful way and listen 
inside because we're not necessarily consciously aware of, of the thoughts that we are um, that's going on in the back of our mind but when we can take the time hi Tony um, to slow ourselves down and really listen to what we're what's happening in, in our the, our unconscious mind often those are horribly critical horrible horrible things that we would never say to another person but yet we'll say them to ourselves because um, for some reason, we can rationalize saying them to ourselves. I think a lot of times that's a, um, a very young uh, part of ourselves that, again, had internalized that as a child. So, so learning to um, recognize that, that dialogue that we have that's going on inside and learning how to manage it differently. Um, Dimitri says, in uh, my opinion, current reality cohorts up. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, I, I like that you said that because um, I've, just, I've just been um, really listening to some um, some frequent some healing frequencies that can definitely help with um, self esteem among other things. Um, so check those out on YouTube. I love them. Um, I, they're, they're, when I when I think about the fact that we are um, basically we exist as uh, atoms vibrating, right? So we are um, vibrating all the time. We are at a frequency level. And um, music and um, tones can affect, uh, and those vibrational tones can affect us on a cellular level to change how we feel about ourselves, among other things. So check those out. Just check out some healing frequencies online. I think they're they're awesome. I've been listening to them for the past few months and finding them to be really, really helpful for me personally. And some of my friends have also found them to be helpful. So. Highly recommend that. Look up healing frequencies. I listen to the rain ones at night while I'm sleeping. Helps me get deep sleep. Also reprograms me for um, my consciousness around money, around self-esteem, around um, just uh, cellular healing, all kinds of cool stuff. But back to what I was saying. So the, that internal dialogue. Um, okay, Alan, I gotta check in on what you're saying. Uh, oh yeah, that's cool, Alan, I love that. Alan says he used the healing frequencies too. That's great. Um, check them out. They really are awesome. So the the other thing is to be conscious of those unconscious thoughts and take the time to slow down when you're flooded and just really listen to those to that dialogue that's going on in your head because that dialogue has probably been with you since you were very young because we learn that um, as a child. It's again the the voices that we are internalized from the way we were treated as a child and sometimes they weren't meant to be harmful they're meant just to kind of keep you in line and make sure you don't do the wrong things but but when they're continued enough over time and, and as a child we're not given the tools necessarily to know how to interpret them so we end up internalizing and, and, and hearing that very negative dialogue so when we find ourselves overwhelmed with that negative dialogue the trick is to first off identify it and then start kind of separating out our rational mind from that um, that emotional that childlike reaction that we have when we're under stress because that way we can begin to have a different kind of dialogue with that part of us it literally is reimagining yourself as a small child seeing yourself as a, a young person and imagining what you looked like, how you felt. Um, hey, Todd, thanks for tuning in. Um, so, so, so taking the time to imagine yourself as, as a young child and, and imagine saying those things to that child. No, of course not. You would never say those things to anyone, let alone a young child. So. So separate out your adult self from that young child and start changing the, how you speak to that child. Because what we tend to do is overreact when we've made a mistake, we've done something that hasn't lived up to our expectations. We totally will say horrible, abusive things to, to ourselves. And when we can picture ourselves as though we were saying those things to, the, to an outside child, to, to that little child within us, and we can say things differently to that part of us, we can start to change not only the dialogue, but, um, hi Randy, but how we ultimately feel, how our self-esteem is inside of us and how we 
feel about ourselves and can represent ourselves in a, in a more positive way and interact with our others in a more positive way and not so easily triggered into shame and defensiveness maybe or feel the need to brag so much or feel the need to prove ourselves so much because when we're doing those things we're exhibiting that we don't have good self-esteem even though we may think that we're exhibiting something else that in fact is what we're exhibiting so um let's see someone else has got a note here uh, oh wow you're from nigeria hello and i can't won't even begin to pronounce your name uh, oh i'm so thrilled that you're here um so um Start changing that dialogue to that, that child. See that child and say, oh, sweetie, you know, you don't deserve to be talked to like that. Nobody deserves to be talked to like that. I am so sorry that you think that that's okay because it's not okay to talk to yourself like that. You did the best you could and then start talking to yourself just like you would any other outside child had they done whatever it was that you did or did not do and be empathetic with your inner self and express that through um, what you're thinking and saying for internally to that little child so that you can begin to lift up the heart of, of your inner child to feeling more loved and cared for because but basically what, what we're doing here to raise that self-esteem is, is to reparent that part of us because that part of us um, did not experience a loving, nurturing um, dialogue, either consciously or unconsciously from our parents, we, we or other caregivers would have, have learned to think in ways that were hypercritical. And it, I'm not saying that to criticize your parents or caregivers because they did the best they could with what they had they weren't even necessarily aware of the impact that they were having, but nevertheless, that's the impact they had. And so what I'm saying to you is you have an opportunity to take ownership of your parenting, the parenting that you should have gotten or, or wish you could have gotten or would have been awesome had you gotten. Most of us didn't get that. So we can take ownership of that for ourselves and that's the great news because we're not dependent upon another adult to do that for us and this is one of the things we get in trouble with in relationships is because we expect that to come from our partner and you know early on in a relationship we, we tend to get that right in the beginning when they're falling in love and they see nothing but the good things about you and they see you with rose-colored glasses and it's all great but over time that they you know they start looking at you a little differently and they're you know changing their um, view of you they become a little more critical and then we internalize that and we start beating up on ourselves again yeah and that's not good so it cannot be dependent on someone else we have to learn how to do that for ourselves okay i'm, I'm seeing alan's making some more comments here i'm sorry to have to leave this i've got some more to do i'm so closely in touch with your subject i wish i could hear more well well i will be back on i mean you you can find this all i will leave it up it'll be on um not only my personal page, but on my Melody Brook LPC LMFT page, I will leave it up. You can find them there. It's probably easier to find them there. Um, all my past ones are up there too, because that's basically all I post on that page. So they'll be easier to find. Um, who do we have here? Uh, uh, hi, Demetri. Um, I mean, time of calculation per days, every year, or, or less than less, all the time become more frequencies. Yes, the more, right, right. The more frequently you say these things, the, the more damage it does. That's absolutely right. And when we have developed a pattern of this, it can severely affect not only how we feel about ourselves, but how we function in the world and, and the, the things that we choose to do and the, the risks that we take and the um, opportunities that we are willing to um, uh, uh, jump into or not jump into has to do with that constant barrage of, of negative thoughts that we might have going through that evoke these strong negative emotions that make us feel less than and, and bring us to a place where we're not functioning at our best. Because the truth is you are gifted. We are all gifted in some incredible way, but, but most of the time or much of the time, 
we have such negative view of ourselves that we're not able to fully express all of who we are. And part of why I do these videos is in the hopes that um, more people will become more connected to the value that they have and be more able to express that in the world and make this world a better place because I think we all need to have more of you, not less of you. And the, the, the self-esteem, lack of self-esteem and the, the, the verbal beating up actually takes away from who you are and takes away from your ability to express who you are in the world. Um, yeah, so, um, hi Anne. Um, so what I, so what I'm saying is, um, what I my, I want for you is for you to learn how to speak to yourself differently, and to to be able to again separate out that that little child in you, see that that child in you as though they were an outside child, and change the dialogue that you have that you give to that inner child, so that that inner child can start receiving the love, the acceptance the um, self-esteem, the, the that, that, you know, and, I, and I'm not saying that you build them up and tell yourself that you're perfect, wonderful, and ideal, because, you know, none of us are perfect, whatever that is. We do make mistakes, so we just talk to ourselves the way we would any other child, which is, it's okay, honey, everybody makes mistakes. You know, I see that you wish you had done it differently. I wish we had done it differently, too, and next time maybe we can try it a different way and do, have a better result. But you know, you don't learn unless you try. You don't make mistakes um, by, do, by doing nothing. The only way, you know, start to talking to yourself in that same nurturing way you would to an outside child. Give them the love, acceptance, um, the encouragement, and the, the honest feedback that you perhaps did not get as a child. Give that to that little girl or little boy inside of you so that you can begin to experience yourself differently. And it will begin to lift up your heart in a way that nothing else can. I, I will share with you an experience that I had, hi Jonathan, um, which was that when I was um, in my early 30s, I had just started a job working at a treatment center and there was this lovely woman who was the receptionist and she was an older woman and I really liked her. And I just, I mean, I, it was less than two weeks on the job and um, she had called everybody in to have lunch with her. We were all bringing our brown bags to lunch and she was gonna share with us all about her new boyfriend. And I listened to her talk about him like with everybody else and was eating my lunch. And then at some point I kind of um, said, well, uh, he sounds like he might be just a little bit codependent. And boy, did she not wanna hear that and she just jumped all over me. And I